what would you say are the biggest bottlenecks in this whole CFD process? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. So let's, I'll do I'll do pre-processing first. Mm -hmm. I'll do yeah, pre-processing sure. first. So you've, so you've done your hand calculations and you've tried to work out as much as you can of what you think the solution is going to be, uh, and the next thing will be uh, building your geometry and building your mesh. That's usually the case with your pre-processing. Um, one thing which is, uh, I was talking to a, a colleague the other day about this actually, when, you, when you're generating a mesh for CFD, uh, when you're quite new, you may think that uh, out of the time I spent building my mesh in my, in my program, I may think that, oh, actually 90% of the time will be spent building the mesh and then perhaps 10% I'll spend fixing it and improving it, trying to reduce the, the skewness and the non-orthogonality and the aspect ratio and just fixing it and reducing some of the, the bad areas and manipulating things. That's often what people think when they come to meshing. But in practice, what happens is you probably spend about 40 to 50% of the time just making that first mesh. And then all of the time in meshing is often spent just fixing those few little problems that you have And it's often things, uh, your inflation layers are compressing or that the, skew, the cells are being skewed by a bit of surface. Those small problems can take uh, hours and hours and often days to fix. So when you're uh, planning your time and you're thinking about your meshing, I would uh, fully anticipate that if, let's say, it took you a, a day to produce your first mesh, definitely expect at least that length of time where you'll just be spent making tiny adjustments to it, trying to move cells around and just adjust inflation layers and things ever so slightly to improve that mesh. That's definitely something that can, can help you for your planning. And in terms of the uh, overall process of the project as well, because the, because the meshing is such a, such a, a bottleneck and it's so difficult, particularly if it's a big, uh, big project, another useful thing which you can think of when you're doing these, uh, these problems is to think of rather than just the CFD code itself being an iterative solver. So a CFD uh, solver makes a guess at the solution and then improves it until it, it converges to some tolerance. You can also think of your entire investigation as an iterative process as well. That really helps. You'd fully expect that you'll make a mesh, set it up in your code, run all the way through, get to the end, get your answer, and then find my mesh is perhaps wrong or I need to change my boundary conditions and I need to go all the way back to the start of that process. And it can often take you two or sometimes three loops through that process, particularly if you're uh, doing something in academia to get, to get that solution that you're really, uh, that you're really interested in. So you can, uh, with your pre-processing step with that in mind, you can also just go in with a rubbish mesh, go in with a mesh that's terrible. That's something I often do. I'll get my geometry and just throw in a rubbish mesh, uh, maybe only a few inflation layers or maybe none at all, maybe only a couple of hundred thousand cells. Just go in with something rubbish and just run through the entire CFD process so you can get to the end and so you can iron out all the creases and work out what's going on. So that's another thing you can do, rubbish mesh for your first go. And uh, the next thing would be definitely thinking about Uh, the scripts that you're going to set up to do things as well. And the, the reason you might want to, to think about how you script your CFD in, in MATLAB or, or Python, they tend to be quite popular, is uh, if you think to yourself, my first go at this CFD problem, I'm probably going to get the answer wrong. I might be off by 20%. I'm probably going to have to do it again because I've missed something. Then it can be quite useful to try and automate things as you go along. Uh, and that's particularly the case in, in OpenFoam where you have lots of files all over the place. Um, it can be quite useful to, for example, make, make your own script that will uh, go into your monitors and just pull out your force data and do your integration for you and make a plot, for example, of your convergence. That can be something that's quite useful to do on your first go. So